Alrighty, this is the fourth video, um, and it should be the last video on the subject of muscle physiology. Fingers crossed, right? So we have been talking about how the muscle contracts, and in order to understand how it contracts, we needed to answer the question, how can the motion of a as a protein that's so small that you can't even see it through the most powerful light microscope, when that protein goes like this, that causes your whole muscle to contract. How does that happen? And it has everything to do with sarcomeres. And now we've learned the names of four different proteins, right? We've learned that inside of this architecture, let's see if I can make, inside of this architecture, right here, we have got the thick filament that is also known as myosin. We have got these thin filaments that are known as actin. And now we know that also wrapped around these thin filaments, we have got the protein tropomyosin. And attached to the tropomyosin that is wrapped around the actin, we have got these proteins called troponin. Right? And we know that they are organized really geometrically, so geometrically that when you look at it through a regular light microscope, you can see them as stripes or striations. Right? We've learned that an individual sarcomere goes from one Z line or Z disc to the next Z line or Z discs. And now we know that these actins, these actins, they have got parts on them that are called binding sites, and it's only at those binding sites that the myosin is allowed to touch the actin. And when it does, it will pull the Z lines towards the center. So if this were um, my husband and I um, in that video, then my husband would be standing right here, and he would be holding on to that rope here, which is the actin, and he would be pulling my shop vac, the Z line, towards the center of the sarcomere uh, as soon as he was allowed to work, right? So we've got that far, let's go a little bit farther. We're gonna be talking about what myosin does and what the energy molecule ATP does. All right, now we're going to look at things in tremendous detail. We're at the level where we can actually look at molecules. And let's start by orienting ourselves. Right here, this is going to be actin. Down here, all of that is going to be myosin. But we've zoomed in so close that now they're showing us individual little spheres. Each one of these is an actual actin protein that are organized in a quaternary structure. And here's a myosin, and it is also part of a huge quaternary structure with millions of myosins. Now, you'll notice that troponin and tropomyosin, they're not on this image. Why? Because that's not this story. We did that story. Now we're talking about what ATP does and what myosin does when it interacts with um, actin. Right? So we could start at any point, but they're starting up here with number one. With number one, what is going on? At this moment, the myosin is not attached to the actin at this moment. So this might be what it looks like when the muscle is relaxed, but it also could be what this protein looks like in between its individual contractions, right? Uh, yeah, that's my cat, all right. Um, so ATP has already bound to the myosin and the myosin has been cocked and set for um, its contraction. So here's the thing. Um, myosin uses up the energy molecule ATP at a moment that is a little bit counterintuitive. You know, I know that when I was thinking about this, I was always thinking that when the myosin was actually doing its thing like this, okay, that that would be the moment that myosin would be using up the ATP, but that's not when it happens. Myosin, in my way of thinking, is a little bit more like a mousetrap, okay? I don't know if you've ever set a mousetrap, kind of nerve wracking, but when you set a mousetrap, it's got a little spring and you, and you open up the mousetrap and you set the mousetrap and, and then you hold it still and it's ready to go. Now, at that moment, 
there is energy stored in the mouse trap. So if the mouse steps on the little trap, it'll fling shut, right? That is the way myosin is. Myosin is like a mouse trap. The molecule ATP does two things. It causes the myosin to let go of the actin and it opens up the myosin molecule and there is energy stored in that opened up subunit. Then if the myosin is allowed to touch a binding site for actin again, that will spring the trap and the myosin will spring shut, right? So at this particular moment, myosin is like the opened up the set mouse trap. At this moment right here, step number two, the myosin has attached to the binding site on the actin. And the science way of saying that is there has been a cross bridge formed between the myosin and the actin. That is going to cause the myosin to step number four, fling shut, just like a mousetrap would fling shut. And that is called the power stroke. In the power stroke, the myosin is going to release what was left of the ATP. Now it is going to be in that shut state and in that shut state, it is, and in that shut state, it is holding the two ends of the muscle close together. What causes it to let go? We are going to have another molecule of ATP that is going to bind to the myosin. Then the myosin will let go of the actin and then it'll open up. It'll open up again right there, right? So the, the energy for muscle contraction comes from the, the ATP molecule, but it is, you would think that the molecule would get used right here between three and four at the uh, cross bridge and the motion, but it's not. The molecule actually gets used over here at step five. It's actually getting used at the moment that we're asking myosin to let go of the actin and to cock itself for the next contraction, right? That's gonna be really important for talking about rigor mortis. You know how in dead bodies, dead bodies, they go really stiff for a while and that might surprise you, but this is part of the reason why that happens. So we have talked about all of the things that are going to happen, going to happen that are going to ultimately allow a muscle to contract. But what are those different steps and where are they in the different parts of muscle contraction? Well, the first step is excitation contraction coupling. So you, I, I don't know if you got a chance to learn this in lab yet, but in every individual muscle contraction, we can stimulate the muscle with a little jolt of electricity if we want to. And there is a tiniest little pause between the moment that the electricity zaps the muscle and the moment that the muscle starts to contract. All of the things that happen in that little bit of lag phase time are the things that happen in excitation and contraction coupling. So what are they? The first step is going to be that our somatic motor neuron is going to release the neurotransmitter acetylcholine into the synapse, into the neuromuscular junction. After that happens, the binding of acetylcholine to the ligand gated channels will cause them to open and now sodium is going to allow, be allowed to diffuse into the cell and that is going to cause graded potentials. If those graded potentials add up, they are going to cause voltage gated channels in the muscle cell cell membrane called the sarcolemma, and that is going to initiate a new action potential, very similar to the ones we talked about in the nervous system. That action potential is going to travel down the T-tubules, and when it goes down the T-tubules, it is going to cause um, the sarcoplasmic reticulum to open up voltage-gated calcium channels on the membrane of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And when calcium channels on the sarcoplasmic reticulum open, 
that is going to allow calcium to diffuse out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum and across the sarcomeres. When calcium is there, it binds to troponin, and that changes the shape of troponin. When the shape of troponin is changed, troponin is going to move tropomyosin, uh, and that is going to expose the binding sites on the actin molecule. And now, finally, myosin is going to be able to see the binding sites. And as it grind, binds the actin and starts to pull it towards the center of the sarcomere, now we get contraction. So every one of these steps, except for the last one, are, pi, are parts of excitation contraction coupling. Ultimately, it's going to be the energy of ATP that is going to cause the contraction of the muscle. Okay, I really thought I would be able to finish this particular topic in just one more lecture, but I'm going to go over time, so we're going to have one final video to finish this, so cue up the next one.